everyone, today is the perfect day to film a video on how to train parkour on a sprained ankle. Well, because I just sprained my ankle. So, <laughs> perfect timing. Actually, I'm only filming this video because the sprained ankle happened, but I'm going to show you guys ways that you can still train, keep your body in shape, keep doing parkour to an extent while having an injury. And in this specific example, it's going to be with a sprained ankle. Now before we do anything, make sure when you first get injured or you first get your sprained ankle that you take the proper measurements to make it, help it heal as quickly as possible. That's the most important thing so that you can get back to your full parkour training as soon as possible. So the first thing in doing that is just making sure you're doing the basic recovery things when it first happens. Especially when you first get a rolled ankle, it's going to swell up a lot and you don't want to be training when it's really swollen because it's just going to really slow down the healing process and it's going to be painful to train on it like that. What you want to do is just make sure that you're doing basic compression on it, elevation, you know, things that prevent it from pooling up and getting swollen but that you keep the blood flow going in and out of it because that's what's going to help speed up the healing process. There's a bunch of videos you can watch on YouTube to get more in-depth learning on how you can help your injury recover quicker. I'm not going to go so much into depth in that, but one thing I did want to add to that that I find really helps me jump back into parkour as quickly as possible is that I keep my ankle mobile and moving as much as possible during that recovery process. And I only move it as much as it's just slightly out of my comfort zone. I don't want to move it where it's in extreme pain that might just be damaging it. Where I'm constantly trying to stretch it and move it and flex the muscles. Like the first day it happened, the most I could do was just flex my toes because of how painful it was. But by the second day, I was able to start moving my ankle back and forth like this and just barely side to side and now I'm starting to be able to go side to side a little bit more doing small baby circles still limited in my range of movement but I've been constantly trying to just keep it moving and mobile and I've felt it getting better very quickly and it still has retained some of its flexibility because it hasn't just been locked in place for three days straight. Another really helpful thing to do to keep its range of motion and especially to start building your strength back as it starts getting better and better is using some sort of exercise band. I like something stretchy but something like a towel works too. You'll just have to create your own resistance the way you hold it. But basically I just throw the band over my toes and then I'll do strengthening exercises where I push against the resistance like so and do that as many times as I can till I really can't do it anymore or you know feel like I've done enough. And then another exercise I'll do, I'll hook the band around my foot this way so that I can do raises like this. And then if you change the angle, you can move your foot laterally like this. Same thing on the other side. See, this is the direction where it hurts the most, so I'm only going to just let up on the tension and just do it a little bit. Actually, I probably don't even need a band doing it that way cuz that's how much I can feel it on that side. But I'm still just trying to keep the range of motion moving consistently so that it doesn't ever get locked up. Because once it gets locked up, it takes a lot longer to stretch it out and get back to where you have full mobility again. Alright, so now I'm going to go head out to find a spot to train. But before we do that, one last thing I needed to mention is make sure that you have your foot wrapped and secured before you go train. Ideally when you're training you're not going to be putting a lot of weight on your ankle or your injury but you still want to take safety precautions so I actually have this ankle brace that's extremely sturdy that'll definitely prevent it from re-rolling or anything like that. If you don't have an ankle brace you can just do a really tight wrap. Just keep in mind that <laughs> if it's super tight you want to let your ankle breathe occasionally so you're not just cutting off all the circulation to your toes or whatever but just do whatever you can to secure your ankle to prevent injuries in the future. So I'm going to throw this on we're going to go find a spot. I'm going to teach you some methods for doing parkour on an injury specifically a sprained ankle. So let's go.
So I'm at this really cool little skate park setup. I've actually been here before a long time ago and did a cool parkour video. You should check that video out. But now I'm going to be training here with a rolled ankle. So my approach is going to be a little bit different. First things first, still got to get a warm-up in. Only instead of my typical jumping and running warm-ups I might be doing, I'm going to be spending more time focused on one leg and my arms. The amazing thing with parkour is it's all about adapting. Whatever your body's like, whatever your environment is like, you can figure out a way to move through your environment and overcome obstacles. In my case, I just have to make use of my two arms and one leg, which is plenty. Like you should take inspiration from people like Ruben Roldan who only has one leg but who does amazing parkour and really cool moves. I'll include a link to his channel and videos in the description below. It goes to show that <laughs> if you can move your body, you can do parkour. You just gotta be smart about it and be safe. So I'm gonna start off with some vaults, focusing jumping from my left leg, which is my weak jumping leg, so this will be good for me to strengthen it up and practice jumping from it and landing on it more. The whole goal is to do things that I'm really comfortable with so that I know I have good control over it, only now I'm focusing doing it, jumping off one leg, and landing one leg, and just being cautious of my injured foot so that I don't hit it on something or land hard on it. So just make sure you ease into things and do everything you can to mitigate impact and stress on your injury. So even though my ankle is injured, I can still utilize my leg with momentum. I can still swing it, kick it, which helps generate momentum for jumping or flips or things like that. So just another thing to keep in mind. Or maybe I don't even want to use my feet at all, then I can just do handstands everywhere. I can't stress enough that if you do plan on training on an injury, you take as many precautions as possible and do it as safely as possible because you don't want to re-injure your injury. That just means it'll be even longer before you can start training again. So everything I'm doing today I know is fully within my control and limits of what I'm capable of. I know there's things I could push myself to try a little bit harder, do a little bit more advanced moves, but I just don't want to take that risk when I'm still recovering from an injury. So right now it's just low key training so that I can still stay in shape, keep moving, continue my parkour training, and then when my ankle is fully healed, I can go back at it hard and it'll be in no time because I'm taking the proper steps necessary to prevent injury and to heal as quickly as possible.
And don't forget about bars. Your feet don't even need to touch the ground. Though, be very careful training on bars because if you slip off and land wrong, it might just hurt a little bit. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember, the most important thing is to listen to your body. Your body will tell you when you're doing something wrong. Now, discomfort is okay. If you're doing something that just puts you out of your comfort zone, it might even be a little bit good for you. It's when you feel sharp or shocking pain from something you're doing, you probably shouldn't be doing that. So just pay attention, grit your teeth through it, and have fun, train safe. If you want to do parkour in the long run, Remember, it's all about safety and conditioning and being smart about the way you train. So I got more videos coming. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all my new videos. And once again, thanks for watching everyone and we'll see you next time.